Alright, so I'll start off, but welcome everybody and thanks for being here and taking the time to be here, Joanna Brent. Uh, if you guys remember, we had a hike here shortly after Brent passed away and uh, we hiked over here and then we came around and hiked up there. And as we walked around here, you, you, you could see a few trees that have been planted in honor of some other folks. So uh, I think Jeff and Sue and I both thought at that point in time what a, what a great thing to do to honor Brent. Uh, because Brent spent a lot of time here, as everybody knows. Uh, he paddled on the Chattahoochee here, and he hiked up here, and he hiked up there. And I'm sure he. Uh, just did a lot of thinking here, so we thought it was a great idea to uh, honor Brent with a tree. And if you think about it, a tree is a great way to honor somebody. Uh, it will be here, you know, forever. And obviously, it's a little short now, five, six feet, but it's going to grow and it's going to continue to grow and forever and ever. And it will provide comfort for people that walks by here. It will provide comfort for for animals, for the shade, and I think it's appropriate that we that we did a dogwood. Uh, I called Jeff and, and Sue when we decided that this is what we were going to do, and they both agreed that a dogwood would be a would be a perfect tree. And if you think about it, a dogwood. I did a little bit of research on, on dogwoods, and dogwoods are, are probably one of the strongest trees out there. The wood of a dogwood is, is very very strong. And if you think about that, Brent was very, very strong. So it's it's a good it's a good thought to, to think about. And I think when when Sue reads what she's going to read, we'll all remember just how strong Brent was. And also, a dogwood is is a very giving tree. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but it provides food and nutrients to over 27 different uh, birds and, and animal species. So it's it's a very giving tree, and once again, Brent is a very giving young man. So I think it's very appropriate that we have the dogwood here, and it will be here forever. And it's also very interesting that we, we picked the dogwood, and that we're honoring Brent this weekend, uh, Easter weekend, the Holy Weekend. And for those of you that know Beverly Lane, uh, we had a dogwood uh, in front of our house. And it was kind of in a, a little hole with a little brick around that hole. And we all we all played in that uh, growing up. I don't know if we climbed that. Did we climb that tree? It was more the magnolia. Magnolia. <laughs> spent time there. Magnolia is what Yeah. But anyway, we all spent a lot of time there uh, with that dogwood. And I remember mom uh, showing showing us or showing me the petal of the dogwood and that it represents the crucifix. So I think it's very timely that we would honor Brent with this beautiful dogwood. It's gonna be a beautiful tree. Uh, it can grow 25 feet high and 25 feet wide. So, you know, forever and ever, we can always come back to this park and remember Brent and know that this tree will be here forever and ever in his name and, and in his honor. So, with that being said, as an introduction, yeah. Um, when you finish, I just wanted to read a little thing real quickly before we move on to somebody else, because it's about the tree. Okay. All right. So, changing plans, Lisa is going to say something about the tree, and then I think Sue and, and Jeff would like to say something as well. So, Lisa. It's just the, the timing. This is a poem y'all all have heard. Joyce Kilmer. Yes. And it's beautiful. It's trees. I think that I shall never see. A poem as lovely as a tree. A tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the sweet earth's flowing breast. A tree that looks at God all day and lifts her leafy arms to pray. A tree that may in summer wear a nest of robins in her hair. A pond whose bosom snow has lain who intimately lives with rain. Poems are made by fools like me, but only God can make a tree. 
And that just touched my heart because I was thinking we can always think of this in terms of as these branches grow and reach toward God, they're also reaching toward our Brent. And um, we can think about that through every kind of weather and every season, as this poem says, the, um, the rain, the summer, the, the robin's nest in her hair. It's just, to me, it's beautiful imagery that we can keep in mind. I just wanted to thank all of y'all for being here because it means so much to Sue. The interesting thing that Scott was saying is because Brent, you know, Brent's apartment was just right on the other side of the hill, basically, and he'd love to come here. And the last picture we have of him is out there on a paddleboard. And um, so this is just a special place for us, and it was a special place for him. And I talked to the county because I'd seen couple of the trees and I asked them about it and they said yes. Uh, so I said well I definitely want to honor Brent and I mentioned it to Scott at Christmas. I said well Sue and I we're going to have a tree planted here. He said Jeff we all, we, all of us have already talked about it and we wanted to do that for you. So just the fact that we were totally didn't even realize that we were all on the same page. It means so much to us that y'all did this for us. And um I want to read a little something, and I'm so glad that Jackie's here because Jackie posted this. Uh, we had never seen it, and she posted it not long ago, and this just sums Brent up. It's amazing. He was one of the most positive people. He would have daily affirmations, and there were times when we'd be talking, and I'd say something. He says, Dad, you've got, you're so negative. Don't be so negative. And that was Brent to a T. And I'm thinking today... He would have already seen Batman versus Superman twice. <laughs> I know for a fact. <laughs> so it would be interesting to see what he thought about it. This is Here I Am, Here I Stay. Brent Wiley, 2-3-2009. I was pretty down the other day after being stood up. But when my confidence came back, I started to think about it. And you know what? I'm awesome. No, no, I'm not being cocky. I just realized that I'm a pretty good guy. I know how to treat a woman and how to be a good friend. It's funny no longer having someone holding me down has made a world of difference. Yes, at times I may feel underappreciated and underestimated. I know there is someone out there who does appreciate a nice guy. I am who I am, and if some don't appreciate me for who I am, then they aren't worth my time. Whether it be someone I'm interested in, a friend, a co-worker, or anyone else. But I know I have what it takes to face on this day, and will no longer let anyone hold me back. I know if I stay in this mindset, I will go somewhere. I start my new job tomorrow, and I will go far in it. I will not accept anything else, and I will not let myself lose this determination. I should be something more now, but in the past I have let other people and myself hold me back. Go ahead, underestimate me. I would love to prove you wrong. I know life will still throw me a punch or two, but it will be up to me to take it on the chin and get right back up. I have what it takes to make it on this day, and I'm swallowing my pride before it gets too late. Here I am, here I stay, you will remember me, and we will remember him, and this will be a wonderful tribute to him, and I just again thank you all so much, and we've also printed some copies of this if y'all like some, so thank you. I've been going around looking and to see if I could find something that I felt would be appropriate to read here. And I found this poem, and it's called A Letter from Heaven. And this was written by, um, I forgot her name, but right after somebody she loved greatly died. To, all, to my dearest family, some things I'd like to say. But first of all, to let you know that I've arrived okay. I'm writing this from heaven where I dwell with God above, where there are no tears or sadness, there is just eternal love. Please do not be unhappy just because I'm out of sight. Remember that I'm with you every morning, noon, and night. The day I had to leave you when my life on earth was through, 
God picked me up and hugged me and said, I welcome you. It's good to have you back again. You were missed while you were gone. As for your dearest family, they'll be here later on. I need you here so badly as part of my big plan. There's so much more that we have to do to help our mortal man. Then God gave me a list of things he wished for me to do. And foremost on that list of mine is to watch and care for you. I will be beside you every day of the week and year. And when you're sad, I'm standing here to wipe away the tear. And when you lie in bed at night, the day's chores put to flight. God and I are closest to you in the middle of the night. When you think of my life on earth and all those loving years, because you're only human, there's bound to be some tears. One thing for certain though, my life on earth is over. I am closer to you now than I ever was before. And to my many friends, trust God knows what is best. I'm not far away from you, I'm just beyond the crest. There are rocky roads ahead for you and many hills to climb. Together we can do it, taking one day at a time. It was my philosophy, and please, I'd like for you to give unto the world so the world will give to you. If you can help someone who's in sorrow or in pain, then you can just say to God at night, my day was not in vain. And now I am contented that my life, it was worthwhile, knowing as I passed along the way, I made somebody smile. When you're walking down the street and I am on your mind, I'm walking in your footsteps, only a half step high. And when you feel a gentle breeze of wind upon your face, that's me giving you a great big hug or just a soft embrace. When it's time for you to go from that body to be free, remember you are not going, you're coming home to me. I will always love you from that place way above. I will be in touch again soon. P.S. God sends his love. We also have a copy of that. <clears throat> to share just one more thing at um, at Brent's service Michael referenced a hymn and he couldn't remember the name of the hymn and it's one of my favorites it was written in the 80s and it's become a real favorite in the Methodist Church and it's called the hymn of promise and it's so perfect as Scott said that we're here at Easter and what Easter means to us and why we can be here today and we can rejoice because we know where Brent is. And this is the most beautiful melody and I'm, y'all are all so lucky I'm not gonna sing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> my brothers and sisters are just going, oh God, she's gonna sing. <laughs> I'm not gonna sing. <laughs> but, um, but when you start home, go to YouTube and and find the hymn of promise and listen to this. It's just beautiful. In the bulb there is a flower, in the seed an apple tree, in cocoons a hidden promise, butterflies will soon be free. In the cold and snow of winter, there's a spring that waits to be, unrevealed until it's season, something God alone can see. There's a song in every silence, <coughs> seeking word and melody. There's a dawn in every darkness, bringing hope to you and me. From the past will come the future, what it holds, a mystery. Unrevealed until it's season, something God alone can see. In our end is our beginning. In our time, infinity. In our doubt, there is believing. In our life, eternity. In our death, a resurrection. And at last, a victory. Unrevealed until it's season. Something God alone can see. Uh, that dad always said I mean I think dad said it 
at everybody's wedding, right? Yeah, pity. And, uh, and Brent picked up on it and loved it. And we all loved it. And we thought that we would uh, end today with the Irish blessing that's been part of our family through all the special occasions. And it meant a lot to uh, Brent. But uh, may the road rise up to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. So we love you all. And thank you again for being here. And if, if anybody else wants to say anything, that's fine. Uh, but uh, uh, we do have lunch over there. And once again, I think Brent would be honored to have this here. And just to know that this will be here for the remainder of time. Special. Thank you, everybody.